Hello again everybody, today is still 20th of uh, June, now it's 15 to 6 in the afternoon Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is uh, my second update for the day in which uh, I will share some of the news that was uh, published by Russian media and uh, channels, Russian language channels. Since my first update during the day, Hopefully you will find this uh, update interesting and informative and if so, please don't forget to click that like button and leave some uh, commentary. This is the only way we can somehow fight back this shadow ban that my channel is in and the algorithm of uh, YouTube. But anyways, let's uh, start and um, uh, first of all, uh, situation on uh, Ukrainian battlefield, uh, Russian uh, channels did not really report about some crucial changes on the line of contact. There is a main hotspot is still on the Kharkov direction. Uh, areas of uh, Lipsy and uh, uh, Volchansk on the western and the eastern flanks of uh, Russian local scale offensive operations to create a buffer zone. As you know, the regime concentrated significant uh, uh, number of uh, its reserves in these directions and now on several areas the origin forces are trying to regain control over their lost uh, lost territories at this point uh, not really successfully but uh, i think the origin will continue to sacrifice more and more its military personnel because uh, as i understand zelensky wants to have something to brag about when he will uh, uh, visit us um, in a couple of weeks time on this so-called NATO summit. Next hotspot is of course Kupiansk direction and uh, last several days many channels by the way, uh, mainly foreign channels, not Russian ones, start talking about some mysterious Russian offensive in Kupiansk direction towards uh, Tarskoe. I did not mention this in my previous uh, updates uh, today, yesterday, day before, because I did not see any indicators in Russian media or channels uh, about any Russian large-scale or at least sectoral scale offensive operations towards Tarskoe. I had some questions about it, what was going on, and this morning during his update, Dima, host of Military Summary Channel, said that, well, uh, this information originated uh, was originated by Q regime's propaganda outlets. Uh, it was Q regime's propaganda that said that Russia started a large scale offensive in Tarskoe direction. Then uh, Q regime propaganda outlets start uh, posting or publishing information that situation in Tarskoe direction is uh, very critical. It's something is about to happen. Then very same propaganda outlet start. Uh, creating narrative that well, Kiev is uh, uh, reacted on this uh, straight, you know, straight away, and some forces were deployed, and uh, Kiev regime forces managed to stabilize situation. And I would not be surprised at all if uh, this evening or tomorrow, very same propaganda outlets of the Kiev regime will start pushing narrative that Kiev regime forces not just repel Russian large-scale offensive operations, but even regain control over the some areas that. Uh, the regime forces are controlling right now. So it's a false narrative, as I understand, by the way. There is no large-scale or sectoral-scale Russian offensive operations in Tarskoe direction or anywhere on Kupiansk sector. There are hotspots, of course, around uh, Sinkovka, for example, around uh, some other areas, but nothing that we can uh, say that is uh, in a scale of, uh, like, sector. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Utka. In Russian, we say it's uh, Utka. This is a narrative that was uh, false from the very beginning. And uh, I guess the regime with these false narratives wants to somehow uh, increase morale of the people in Kyiv controlled territory or maybe forces that the regime still has. I don't know why they needed this uh, totally false uh, propaganda, but... Um, it seems like uh, that's exactly what we are dealing with. Completely false narrative because how come that not uh, even single Russian channel that I am subscribed on or not a single Russian media outlet write about sectoral scale Russian offensive that nobody knows about here in Russia? What, what the hell? 
it was completely false narrative that was created by the regime for whatever reason by the way most likely to boost some morale among the regime forces uh, which is extremely low but in any ways as far as I understand, by the way, there are no large-scale or sectoral-scale offensives in Kupiansk sector right now or anywhere on the line of contact. It's uh, mainly operational pause and local-scale skirmishes, uh, artillery duels. Uh, of course, Russian aviation is very active and uh, targeting points of concentration of Kyiv regime forces uh, in certain directions. Uh, uh, and uh, there are, of course, uh, reckoning force operations. That's a daily routine on the line of contact. And when it comes to Russian airstrikes, dear friends, let me show you this video here, which is the first documented case, according to reports, when uh, Russian Air Force used the FAB 3000 a glide bomb. This is a Freeton bomb, by the way. And uh, by this video, you can judge her. Uh, Power, how powerful this bomb is. This is a Lipsy settlement in Kharkov uh, direction. And uh, let's see explosion itself. That's explosion, by the way. That's a Fab 3000 when it targets uh, something. So, yes. Uh, bomb itself did not hit this building directly. Uh, it uh, it uh, it hit uh, on the corner of the building, but as a result of this explosion, difference uh, straight uh, in milliseconds, there are difference in uh, atmospheric pressure, and that difference is so powerful that in radius of uh, two three hundred meters, people may get concussion. I mean, almost guaranteed. So maybe building was not uh, directly hit, but uh, whoever was in that building, probably all of them are with concussion. So, yes, quite powerful explosion. And uh, once again, this is interesting video because it's the first documented case of uh, Russian Air Force using this FAB 3000 online of uh, contact. I guess uh, there will be more and more instances from now on when these uh, extremely powerful uh, glide bombs will be deployed. Okay, uh, as I said, no crucial changes anywhere on the line of... Uh, Contact, it's uh, usual stuff, uh, daily routine, artillery duels, drone wars, airstrikes from Russian side mainly. Although Kyiv regime is of course trying to also use whatever aviation it has uh, left you know, to conduct some, some launches. And it's a reckoning force operation in the northern uh, flank of northern parts of Kharkov region. Kyiv regime is trying to reclaim at least some areas uh, in that buffer zone that Russia created. But for now, not really achieving any success, uh, just sacrificing more and more uh, military personnel. Anyways, let's continue now. And, uh, well, I will share with you this information uh, about, uh, well, weather in Moscow and Moscow region today. And I'm telling you, weather was crazy. I shared on my Telegram several videos of that. Uh, just look at this, man. Cat is in shock. <laughs> Just look at the wind, by the way, and the rainfall. I mean, quite something, isn't it? And unfortunately, unfortunately, according to latest reports that I see, two people were killed during this storm, and uh, several people were wounded. Because when wind is this powerful, of course, anything may turn into the weapon. Trees may fall down and do fall down, as we just observed here. And any object on the streets or walkways can turn into a deadly weapon by wind. And if it hits someone, uh, of course, it, it, it may cause death or injury, serious injuries. So yes, weather in Moscow and Moscow region was uh, crazy, uh, extremely uh, windy, rainy and, uh, and powerful. Let's continue with uh, some other news. And task news agency is reporting that Russian armed forces conducted retaliatory strike on energy infrastructure of the Kyiv regime during the previous uh, night. According to Russian defense ministries, all targets 
were hit. Uh, so uh, these strikes were successful, although defense ministry didn't provide some specifics what exactly or where exactly these strikes uh, occurred. Uh, all we have is uh, reports from independent pages that uh, from uh, Nikolaev and Odessa region up to Zaporozhye, Dnipropetrovsk, Kharkov region and uh, deep inside Kyiv controlled the territory, Kyiv region, Kyiv itself, uh, Paul Tower and some other areas were targeted. Military and logistical infrastructure, including energy infrastructure of the Kyiv regime. But yet again, the Defense Ministry didn't provide some specifics of this uh, relatively large scale missile and drone strikes. Also, Ria Novosti's report that um, aid of the head of DPR, Jan Gagin, was uh, winded uh, today. Uh, as a result of uh, as a result of uh, strikes from uh, from key regime as i understand uh, uh, he end up uh, being targeted by drone and uh, uh, also one mp was with him uh, same time and uh, M mp also received some shrapnel shrapnel winds as you can see uh, it's uh, Light injuries, still dangerous, extremely dangerous, but not uh, threatening to the life of uh, Gagin or the MP that was with him. And I guess many members of our community are familiar with this name, Jan Gagin. Quite often he comments on the situation on the line of contact and many times I shared uh, his statements. Also, RT report here that the West has uh, plans to replace Zelensky, according to Russian foreign intelligence service and if you remember this morning i said that uh, i mentioned that according to very same institution russia's foreign intelligence service uh, us uh, is considering zaluzhny as a possible replacement for zelensky no surprises here i was saying this for quite a long time that most likely zaluzhny will replace zelensky because he has backing of the london and nowadays washington also only question is when and how this replacement will take place but uh, I guess uh, no one can have uh, any doubts about correctness of the information that Wester already has plans uh, how to replace uh, Zelensky and when. Uh, so yes, uh, Russia's foreign intelligence service is correct, uh, I guess, and uh, in fairly short time, once Zelensky will you know sign uh, all the decrees and uh, orders that West, uh, you know. I will order him all the non-popular or extremely unpopular decisions uh, he will be probably replaced and uh, Zaluzhny will take over of the Q regime anyways continue let's continue and Rio Novosti report that Poland Polish government is plans to uh, plans to uh, minimize uh, financial and social support of the uh, Ukrainian refugees, uh, there are Warsaw plans to cut on their social uh, support and of course Warsaw is not the first and uh, clear, definitely not the last country with, uh, with such a move. Many countries in Europe already start cutting uh, aid for Ukrainian uh, refugees and many countries will follow suit and I see this uh, wave of uh, uh, more or less similar moves from the European states as a as a preparation of the ground to basically force Ukrainian refugees, especially Ukrainian military age male refugees, to go back to Ukraine and uh, get sacrificed on the line of contact for the geopolitical agenda of the Western ruling class. I guess uh, Ukrainian refugees understand what is going on, and uh, if they have opportunity, probably many of them will start uh, thinking about migrating somewhere else uh, in some other uh, region of this world maybe because Europe uh, uh, no longer is a safe uh, heaven for them uh, that's for sure Ria Novosti's report that uh, Russia and Vietnam achieve agreement during the pre uh, Russian president's visit in, uh, in Vietnam not just about deepening strategical uh, relationships but also they give guarantees to each other that they will not join any organization that will uh, oppose 
or will be hostile to uh, one of their countries. So additional additional move uh, on part of Vietnam and uh, Vietnam and uh, Russia to uh, secure to further secure this uh, good very good uh, relationships that Moscow and uh, Hanoi have historically speaking and uh, this uh, decision is also important because uh, well Hanoi after signing up for this decision will most likely won't even would not even consider to cooperate or to join a uh, Yukos this new military alliance that that western ruling class is creating in uh, uh, in uh, global south and as we all know uh, united states united kingdom and australia are part of this organization and uh, already there is clear attempts from uh, these uh, countries to bring in japan south korea and a uh, number of other countries to have a bigger influence or or better opportunities to destabilize situation in the region whenever they will find it uh, necessary or whenever western ruling class will find it necessary because i don't think anybody will ask uh, south korean leadership what they think about anything anything at all <laughs> about even about internal policies uh, of the uh, south uh, korea or japan for that matter which is occupied country and of course japanese leadership have no say in anything they are just butaphoria by the way they are just acting as if they are government of japan when in reality they are uh, colonial uh, colonial uh, representatives of the washington that's all and when it comes to topic of uh, this region by the way we have information that south korea is uh, will reconsider its approach on topic of the you know transfers of the weapons to uh, ukraine this is after uh, Russia's president visited North Korea and very significant agreements were reached between the Moscow and the Pyongyang or Pyongyang as it sounds in English. And uh, okay, okay, Seoul, I guess Moscow knows perfectly well the level of uh, cooperation of the South Korea with the Russian enemies with the western ruling class and russia knows perfectly well how many artillery shells south korea transferred to uh, ukraine indirectly maybe they come up with some schemes that south korea is transferring these uh, weapons or munition to us or to some other party and uh, it's not south korea is if those weapons then eventually end up in ukraine i mean and seoul loves to take this pause that i mean why us i mean we are so kind really well, Moscow knows perfectly well what you are doing, South Korean leadership. And therefore, uh, I mean, no one cares about uh, about you and your decision-making process. You can send entire your army into Ukraine if you want to. I wonder how many weeks they will last there. Like one or maybe like little less than that. Uh, so anyways uh, let's continue um, those people by the way that are formally in charge of uh, this this client states of the of the western ruling class they clearly clearly need some reality check because uh, they really are out of touch with the real world anyways let's continue as glad news uh, uh, paper is reporting that uh, in 2027 sea trials uh, of the russian helicopter carrier uh, universal amphibious uh, warship uh, helicopter carrier Ivan Rogo will begun and uh, uh, simultaneously second uh, similar type of uh, helicopter carrier is built for Russian Navy and uh, before end of uh, 2028 both these vessels uh, should be in Russian fleet should be transferred to Russian fleet if anything uh, if everything goes according to plan and by the way these uh, um, helicopter carriers that are project 23900 uh, zero, zero, these projects were created in russia and launched in russia only after france refused to transfer mistral type of helicopter carriers or universal landing uh, ships that russia ordered and paid for it those vessels were built but at some point uh, france just break the deal 
and uh, refused to transfer those vessels to to Russia and uh, well therefore therefore decision was made to build a similar type of uh, warships uh, autonomously in Russia and that's what is going to happen and those Mistral type of aircraft carriers eventually was sold to Egypt uh, that's when it comes to how trustworthy French leadership is and uh, uh, how much you can have trust uh, if you have a contract with uh, France you cannot trust <laughs> no way <coughs> anyways let's uh, continue RT is reporting that UK Labour Party ditches candidate for sharing RT content in 2018 by the way Russophobia in its uh, unique forms and shapes by the way all around the western world uh, clear clear example another one in UK so UK Labour Party has suspended one of its uh, parliamentary candidates just two weeks before the general election after senior members were made uh, aware of his uh, apparent uh, sharing of the RT's content six years ago on his social media Andy Brown is uh, campaigning to represent uh, the Le the Aber Aberdeenshire uh, North and uh, Murray East uh, constituency. I struggle with this word, man. Constituency or constituency. I mean, you know what I mean, isn't it? So he's supposed to, you know, he is fighting to represent these constituencies: uh, Aberdeenshire North and Murray East in Northeast uh, Scotland. The party's decision to remove him uh, from was reported on Tuesday by the press and the journal a local newspaper and has since become a national news story. The post that got Brown in a trouble uh, related to the 2018 Salisbury poisoning case uh, which the British government claimed to be the Russian assassination attempt of their Sergei Skripal, uh, defector spy. The politician reportedly shared the link to an RT article which questioned London's uh, narrative as well as the social media post suggesting that uh, then Prime Minister Theresa May was hiding vital information about the incidents. And this is true, by the way. This made-up story, this made-up story is still uh, uh, used as a sometimes, rarely nowadays, but still used as a as a tool to demonize Russia. And if you remember, there was uh, so much noise, isn't it, at the time that Russia is using this, uh, or Russian spies, uh, using this, uh, what was the name, the Navichok, Navichok, super deadly chemical weapon, and uh, they, they poisoned him and them, and, and I mean, they poisoned everybody. And the uh, question was, if this, uh, whatever Navichok is, so poisonous, so deadly, then how come that no one died from it? <laughs> I mean, simple question, isn't it? How come that no one died from this now we choke? From all the people that uh, allegedly were targeted by Russian uh, spies or whomever, whomever. You know? And there were so many names, isn't it? Every other day there was another name in uh, Western propaganda that allegedly was targeted by now we choke. And Russian special forces, and how come that none of them fucking died? <laughs> I don't wish to die no to nobody, obviously, but I mean, question is legit, isn't it? If you are saying that there is some Navichok stuff that is extremely deadly and poisonous and something that have never been seen before, then expectation is that if uh, if anybody is targeted with such a deadly stuff, then the, I mean, expectation is that they should. Uh, die, you know, but they did not, none of them. So, yes, questions were raised in 2018, and questions are raised even now. But uh, no one is even trying to give public some answers in in UK, in, in other European states, in US. Uh, you know, they have this, this propaganda methods, by the way, they will come up with some crazy stories. They will work on these stories months, two, three, five, ten, and they will just forget about it. And they will never even 
uh, try to answer on the any questions uh, that might be raised in the public anyways by the way i have no idea who, the, who this individual is andy brown uh, what he stands for uh, if he is a part a member of the labor party then uh, well well a labor party is any different than uh, tories i mean are they really different uh, now i doubt about i have some doubts about that uh, to me entire british so-called political elite seems like uh, uni party you know they, they all talk same stuff man <laughs> almost without um, excuses i mean without uh, exceptions all of them talk same stuff same talking points so uh you know what is the difference between them i don't know but still interesting isn't it that person whoever this andy brown is man i i i did i didn't even bother to see his photo by the way because i just don't care but information clearly demonstrates level of russophobia that's why i paid attention to this topic that because of the russophobia uh, some candidate from uh, labor party was removed from the uh, mp's uh, list just a few days ago there was an incident with uh, with uh, the singer uh, adele and she was harassed because she was wearing dress that was uh, created by russian designer now this person andy brown is sucked basically because he shared some uh, links to rt from uh, in, in 2018 holy moly man and yet again i don't care about internal politics of the united kingdom i don't know who this guy is and uh, i only know it's like top, top politicians in uk are top names in the politics that's all uh, I have no interest in, to, to learn any more about uh, UK's internal um, political uh, situation. But uh, I mean, Russophobia, increased levels of Russophobia and xenophobia is quite upsetting. That's for sure. Zliad newspaper is reporting that, uh, well, uh, affiliated with the ruling party um, MPs in, uh, in, uh, in Georgia accused the uh, accused the u.s ambassador in georgia in uh, insulting georgian people and the uh, republic itself uh, interesting is interesting this is happening uh, in in, uh, in a parliament by the way this is parliamentary group affiliated with the government so if they speak uh, uh, this uh, critically towards uh, u.s ambassador i guess uh, I guess the ruling party has no any better any more sympathies towards uh, this uh, person uh robin uh, danigan Dan danigan that's name of the u.s ambassador and uh, in, in this particular case uh, reasoning is that uh, u.s ambassador uh, criticized georgia for uh, for doing business with china with chinese companies and uh, allowing chinese uh, companies to build uh, port in Anaglia on, on the Black Sea coast of Georgia and US didn't like that and uh, they start criticizing Georgia for, for everything this uh, person uh, ambassador Robin Dunningham uh, tried to blackmail Georgia that I mean how unthankful Georgians are because US spent some six billion in Georgia and look what you are doing now you are cooperating with China Chinese business how come and uh, the georgian politicians uh, from this uh, uh, force of uh, people sila naroder in russian Khalkhizala in in georgian and uh, power of people that will be translation in english so group i mean politicians from this parliamentary group people's force uh, they corrected the u.s ambassador and said that well first of all it's not six billion that u.s one way or another invested in georgia it's four billion us dollars and then most of this four billion was uh, spent on uh, ngos in georgia that us controls on a uh, so-called uh, political opposition that us controls and on so-called media that us controls so basically these politicians are saying that for georgia really and georgian society they did uh, almost nothing and this is correct by the way 
they not just didn't did do any good for Georgia, but I remind you, dear friends, that it was U.S. administration who ordered Saakashvili in 2008 to uh, reignite civil war in Georgia, in South Ossetia, to be more precise, in on 7th of August on 2018, 2008, sorry. And then, very next day, on 8th of August 2008, to open fire on uh, Russian peacekeepers to provoke Russia on reaction, to provoke Russia uh, on a military response. And uh, Saakashvili, president of Georgia at the time, uh, executed this order from the Washington, unfortunately, perfectly well. And he managed to provoke military conflict between uh, Russia and Georgia by uh, conducting this act of war uh, against Russia, which is, uh, of course, the killing of the Russian peacekeepers uh, that had a UN mandate in, uh, so in the zone of conflict between Georgia and South Ossetia. So that's what the US did, by the way. They provoked, they reignited and provoked uh, civil war and then conflict with the uh, with Russia, as a result of which Moscow recognized the independence of South Ossetia and uh, Abkhazia. And not just that, but the uh, puppet regime of the Saakashvili, uh, that was 100% controlled by Washington, destroyed, destroy, and before him, Shevardnadze's regime, destroyed relationships with Russia almost completely, almost completely, and uh, I mean, who knows how much damage by this was done to Georgia in terms of prospects that Georgian economy would have, and uh, and also Georgian citizens, Georgian society. If relationships with Russia was not destroyed and the uh, Russian market was available for Georgian business, because I mean, for tiny Georgia, Russian market is a uh, huge man huge for any country russian market is a uh, is a uh, big importance has big importance but for especially tiny countries man the russian market is huge and you tell me how much opportunities georgia and uh, georgia's economy georgia's businesses first of all georgian society lost due to policies of the washington towards georgia and due to orders that washington was giving to their puppets in Georgian government, uh, from Shevardnadze to Saakashvili. And these people, by the way, in 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 uh, political class of uh, U.S., they have audacity to say word about Georgia, man. You try to sacrifice and kill it. You literally try to kill the Georgia statehood of Georgia. And you sacrificed hundreds of Georgian citizens, and you have a dossier to say something about Georgia? Unbelievable, man. Sliad newspaper is reporting that, uh, well, according to Reuters, new sanctions package from uh, uh, EU will, uh, first of all, target Russian LNG and the Russian tankers, uh, tanker fleet. Uh, okay. This is, by the way, yet another example when EU is shooting its own feet, uh, because of course uh, Russia will will find the uh, buyers of its LNG quite easily. It's not going to be a big deal. Uh, nothing going to happen to Russian tankers. Sir. EU is trying to block uh, development of se several Russian LNG projects, but they will fail, of course, because. Uh, well, come on now, India, China, many countries in the global south has huge interest in development of the Russian LNG projects. Because they think her about future and therefore uh, Russia will finish all the LNG projects, uh, all of them. Russian tanker fleet will be okay because uh, they, any western state will uh, seize Russian tanker, will be day of when uh, fleet of those that country has finished because russia will retaliate and russia will seize not just one ship but russia will block ocean for all the vessels on the flag of that country that's what is going to happen and if european states want to uh, check 
how correct my reading of the big picture is i mean they are welcome and then let's see so yes man this is but when same time by the way while russia will easily manage to overcome these uh, barriers that eu is trying to create i mean what 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 will happen with the energy market inside you it will increase in price energy will become even more expensive and if energy is more expensive that means that everything become more expensive because energy cost is in the price of literally everything so that means higher inflation higher cost higher prices higher cost of living higher prices further deterioration of the economical and social situation and the social fabric in general and this is all done to european citizens to citizens of european states by their own governments by their own political so-called leadership so if i don't know how long this slip gonna continues in europe when majority of society is in, in i don't know man it's like like they are uh, under hypnosis or something you know because uh, it's so clear that their own so-called elites are destroying their livelihoods all around the europe by the way it's so clear so obvious but majority is still acting like nothing is happening you know they are complaining because i mean internet is full by the way with complaints but they are not acting on it you know they just complain and when when they will try to act it might be just too late when they will finally wake up majority and uh, and realize that wow blin you know or their own political elites destroy future of their kids it might be too late to act i'm afraid anyways let's continue artist report here that uh, western property could be seized in russia russia has a wide arsenal of politicians as a retaliation by the way so russia has a wide arsenal of political and economic uh, countermeasures to respond to the potential confiscation of its uh, sovereign assets uh, including a tit for tat seizure of the western property in russia foreign ministry spokeswoman maria zakharova has said and uh, uh, of course we all know that the uh, so-called leaders of the group of seven or g7 uh, nations agreed at the last week's summit in uh, apulia in italy to use interests from the frozen russian assets to secure some 50 billion loan for key regime and the uh, very very first day they will start stealing russian assets uh, moscow is very clear that there will be retaliation and there uh, you know russia will seize the uh, western assets and uh, there are some 300 billion western assets in russia by the way it's not like uh, uh, only one billion western assets in russia or five or ten billion there is some at least 300 around 300 billion of the western assets here so there is a opportunity there a real possibility to act tit for tat in a you know tit for tat uh, principle but yet again moscow don't want this to happen moscow was very clear about it and that's why so many warnings towards west that don't do it i mean you already illegally freeze russian assets uh, okay we are not happy about it but uh, i mean you are crazy what we can do about it but at least don't destroy finally financial and banking system of the west your own financial and banking system do not steal assets because that will be finished for you that will be end of uh, western financial and banking system that russia was a part of uh, and russia's uh, central bank's uh, head by the way but uh, they don't care they don't care so okay russia has given enough warnings enough signals messages and so on they would west will start stealing russian assets uh, moscow will retaliate in a, possibly in a very same manner Dash news agencies report here exactly about its central bank i just mentioned it and uh, well according to informations that uh, we are receiving today there is a possibility that the central bank will increase interest rates significantly uh next month uh, if of course uh, statistics will confirm that uh, economic uh, ec economy is moving in alternative scenario 
not uh, as uh, it was predicted by central bank but uh, with alternative scenario which means uh, uh, further overheating of the uh, economy further increase uh, this alternative scenario means that the economy is overheating even faster uh, situation on uh, uh, with the uh, unemployment is uh, i mean unemployment rate is even lower than previously and it's already on record low by the way which means that economy is experiencing huge uh, deficit of the force manpower so if uh, this is also happening and also if uh, uh, demand if demand is increasing despite already high uh, interest rates then central bank most likely will uh, further increase this interest rate to cool down economy somehow and I'm, f I'm afraid that's exactly what is going to happen and i predicted this by the way isn't it i spoke about such possibility like week or two weeks ago and uh well i wouldn't be surprised at all if central bank will increase uh, interest rates not just for one percent but uh, usually they are increasing or decreasing like quarter of the percent if uh, 0 0.5 percent that's a big deal if one percent that's something wow but uh, I would not be surprised if central bank will increase interest rates straight uh, on a two point on two percent up to 18 percent and uh, if economy is overheating so much so that situation is close to critical who would expect that isn't it when west start imposing these sanctions they were probably thinking that russian economy will crash but in reality russian economy has another problem now it's overheating it's uh it's it's working on the maximum of its capacities right now and uh, uh and therefore uh well took somehow cool down economy maybe central bank will increase interest rates not just for two percent but straight away three or four percent uh, which is uh, no good by the way uh it, it it probably it is good for economy but um not for uh, ordinary people that might have plans to take a loan in a bank because uh, credits will become significantly more expensive they already are expensive and they will become even more expensive and uh, when i'm talking about loan i'm talking about her uh, uh, financing education of my older daughter she is uh, applying for university on faculty of journalism this year and uh, and uh, maybe I, I will have to take loan to finance education of the daughter and you know just recently one of the banks uh, offered to me credit I, i'd never ask but they just uh, i i guess i have a good credit story and they offered me credit i declined because uh, i mean credits are too expensive already it's 16 percent interest rates from the central bank and of course commercial banks are uh, lending money even on on the higher percentage point and uh, and now if uh, interest rate from the central bank will reach 18 or 20 percent then can you imagine level of uh, percentage interest rates from the commercial banks that's why i see that uh in you know for me personally this is not really good news this is bad news but and for many people i guess that were maybe planning to take some loan but uh, for economy probably this is good because it will most likely uh, cool down it a little bit anyways anyways let's continue uh, erbekas news agencies report here that uh, well more than 60 uh, percent of uh, moscovites and the residents of the moscow region expect a further increase uh, of the cost uh, on uh, on the uh, property ladder or property market in moscow and moscow region uh, so and the, if expectation is this high if 60 60 percent is expecting that prices will increase further then most likely that's exactly what is going to happen um, and prices for rent or for mortgage will probably 
uh, increased significantly, which is um, also, I mean, uh, for sellers, it may be good news, but for buyers, not really. Artist report here, artist report that uh, US uh, astronauts, by the way, this morning, uh, it was this morning, isn't it? When I reported about some issues with the Boeing's uh, spacecraft that are docked with their ICC and uh, I'll give you some additional news here that US astronauts are stuck in the space. I'll give you names of the US astronauts. So two NASA astronauts are stand stranded aboard uh, of the International Space Station as their spacecraft, a Boeing uh, Starliner, continues to experience uh, technical difficulties. The two scientists who traveled to their station on June 6 were originally meant to uh, stay for uh, only one week. During their press conference on uh, Tuesday, NASA and Boeing announced that the two Americans, Sonny Williams and uh, Butch Wilmore, will not be coming back to Earth before June 26, as experts are struggling to fix their spacecraft. Uh, the Boeing's uh, CST-100 Starliner initially registered several mechanical issues during its uh, uh, maiden uh, main uh, launch on June 6. In route to the station, the crew reported problems with the five thrusters and the four helium leaks, and another leak was revealed soon, soon after. Prior to the flight, the company also stated that the spacecraft already had a small helium leak, but insisted it was not a critical safety of the flight issue and uh, could be managed. NASA commercial crew program manager Steve uh, Stitch explained on Tuesday that the reason for the holdup was the agency's desire to give our teams a little bit more time to look at the data, do some analysis and make sure we are really ready to come home. Well, by the way, <laughs> I don't know how, on, on what level relationships between uh, NASA and uh, Roscosmos are right now, but uh, sites at least still are cooperating on ICC, isn't it? And uh, if it was up to me, I, I mentioned this in the morning, but uh, in the morning's update, but and I, I will repeat if I made it. On 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 place of NASA, I will definitely ask Russian colleagues to help and uh, return this. Uh, scientists uh, to the earth i will not risk with uh, the starliner man and nor should they maybe russian side offered already to help uh, with this uh, situation most likely russian side already uh, offered some uh, some help and i would really like uh, this offer to be taken by nasa because uh, i will never trust <laughs> Boeing ever, by the way, probably in my life. They are unable to build proper even proper equipment even when it comes to space, by the way. Where c quality control is supposed to be like top-notch. So if they are unable to achieve high quality control in a, in a, on a spacecraft, then I don't want even I don't want to even think about uh, how poorly those Boeing planes really are built. Holy moly, man. So yes, let's hope. Uh, let's hope these astronauts will come back safely, and uh, uh, you know, if necessary, I'm quite sure Russia will provide all necessary support. And uh, I guess there is always uh, Soyuz, uh, uh, Soyuz craft docked on the uh, on the space station, uh, just for you know, just in case, sir, and that uh, spacecraft can be used for descent, so that these these people can come down on it or russia may launch uh, conduct some emergency launch of their space vehicle to bring uh, these astronauts home in any case moscow will help if if nasa will ask but uh, situation is really really uh, strange at least to be said
and okay this is it for now quite a long update by the way i did not expect this uh, i made this second update to make sure that tomorrow's first update is uh, gonna be short enough but and i was thinking maybe this second update will be about like 25 30 minutes but it's uh, 15 minutes but anyways hopefully you will find it interesting useful informative and if so please click that like button leave some commentary just about anything on any topic will do to tackle this uh, crazy youtube algorithm and to maybe get out of the shadow ban at least for a couple of hours <laughs> so yes if you can please click that like button and leave some commentary share information about my channel with your friends on any of the platforms that you are active on and uh, if you like my work you can uh, support with uh, small donations through paypal boosty or by subscribing to my patreon page uh, all the links are under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment and your friends when it comes to patreon page and boosty i just uploaded before i start recording this video uh, i uploaded a new reaction video and i tried to debunk several talking points of the western propaganda uh, uh, and uh, i reacted on a, on an interview that pierce morgan had with uh, professor jeffrey sachs and Pierce Morgan is, uh, I mean, uh, is uh, factually incorrect in, in so many uh, points, on so many points that, uh, I mean, I could not even believe that he was at one point uh, editor in chief of the Daily Mirror. This is, I mean, crazy, but, well, hopefully our Patreon community will find that uh, relatively longer reaction video interesting. And uh, if you are interested in some extra content, and if you, if you want to support my work, uh, of course, subscription on the Patreon, paid subscription, by the way, on Patreon, to become Patreon, will, uh, of course, uh, help me greatly. So, yes, all the links, uh, all the links under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment. Have a great day and take care. Bye for now.